Good morning and welcome to our worship on this, the third Sunday of Lent. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. <clears throat> Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, <clears throat> for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I'll call it for this the third Sunday of Lent. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our collect for Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, <clears throat> you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make new and contrite hearts, that we, worthy lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness of our sins. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God. Though we have rebelled against him, let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith together. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives, holy, true, the repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 13, and it, the version is from the message of the Bible. When the Passover feast celebrated each spring by the Jews was about to take place, Jesus travelled up to Jerusalem, <clears throat> he found the temple teeming with people, selling cattle and sheep and doves. The loan sharks were also there in full strength. Jesus put together a whip out of strips of leather and chased them out of the temple, stampeding the sheep and cattle, upending the tables of the loan sharks, spilling coins left and right. He told the dove merchants, get your things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a shopping mall. That's when his disciples remembered the scripture, zeal for your house consumes me. But the Jews were upset. They asked, what credentials can you present to justify this? Jesus answered, tear down this temple and in three days I will have it back together. They were indignant. It took 46 years to build this temple and you're going to rebuild it in three days. But Jesus was talking about his body as the temple. Later, after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this. Then they put two and two together and believed both what was written in scripture and what Jesus had said. <coughs> I can comfortably say that I have never been asked for age identification. Zilch, never, ever, even when I was younger. I'm not sure if that is a good thing or not. But when I was younger, I never did try and get anything underage anyway, so never needed to have some sort of ID. Have you ever had your identification questioned? Who are you? Jesus was being questioned about his identity. What authority did he have was the question that the Jewish authorities asked him. Knowing who we are is something I believe we struggle with on occasion. Maybe we make the wrong decision. I'm convinced that for some people, we make a wrong choice 
and it becomes incredibly hard to change the path that we have already taken. I've always found it hard to believe that people do wrong things from the moment they are born. It becomes more about the choices that we make or are made for us each and every day. Choices made for us when we are younger and choices made by ourselves when we are older. The difficulty is, if we have had a good choice teacher, or if we haven't, then it becomes harder to change. Knowing who we are is important, but knowing who we want to be is probably more so. Lent, as I said last week, is part of looking at how our soul is reflected in our lives. As we progress through this time of self-reflection, we look again at who we want to be in this world. What choices we are going to make that helps in this world, that turns despair into hope, darkness into light and sorrow into joy. Jesus was talking in our reading about the human temple we all carry, Jesus around in. Yes, the bodies that we have and look at each and every day. Looking after the temple isn't important as looking after the soul, as the two are unseparated, one has the other inside. This week I caught a story about the cost of living, which although is predicted to change a little with the cost of utilities due to come down, other costs are still going up. More than income is. However, one of the expanding popular industry is going to the gym. Personal trainers, exercise equipment and wanting to look after our bodies and get them working to a much higher age. This indicates that more people irrelevant to faith are seeking to work on the temple, our temple, even if they have not yet accepted it as such. There is also the vast and huge issues we face with the temple and the soul, the body and who we are when they become out of sync with each other. We know only too well the pain that others and indeed ourselves have known when either the mind or the body begins to fail us. In most of our cases we become well again but that isn't the case for everyone and I'm sure that we have all been touched by others in that way and seen the cruelty of how fragile human beings can be. This passage is probably the most famous for Jesus losing it. He shouts, screams and physically moves people and animals all out of the temple. He wants those who are exploiting the faithful to leave the holy place, those selling to exploit others. So our challenge This week is to drive out those things that are stopping us caring for our bodies, our minds and our souls. Those things stopping us having the opportunity to be in sync, to have the chance of knowing and being the best the person we can be. This can be a challenge as we get so used to just getting by that we've found peace with being good rather than great. Reasoning to ourselves is all that we need to do is, and we produce this list. What Jesus asks of us is a step further. He asks that we become the list. We are embodied in who we want to be, learning from what Jesus has taught us, remapping the way we think and what we do, to become the best of who we are, to be faithful in Christ and to be the best humans to others and to ourselves, that we can be. Let us pray. (coughs) Lord, we ask you to protect our loved ones, our friends and our neighbours. We pray for those who are ill and in pain, longing to live full lives. We pray for those who are sad or hurt in any way. May our support be gentle to those in trouble and need and strong to those in weakness. Take our thoughts and our prayers and use them to further your work of healing in our world. 
Lord, you turn our darkness into light, and in your light we shall see light. May we all come to your eternal transforming joy. Lord, help us to see this time of Lent as an opportunity to develop our discipleship and discipline. Hear our prayers and help us to be aware of what we are asking, that our prayers may change us also. Lord Jesus, you were tried and tempted by the forces of evil. May we never be ashamed of temptation, but save us from the weakness of giving in to it. Lord, help us to choose the way of faithfulness rather than popularity, service rather than fame, sacrifice rather than power. In time of need, reassure us that your support is close at hand. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>